Sabbath, everyone. Today I'd like to bring you greetings from the land of the dying on our way to the land of the living. My topic is, it's worth the wait. It's worth the wait. My text is taken from Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. The record says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, I pray your blessings upon this word and help that this word will be a blessing to all of my viewers. In Jesus' name, Amen. A cursory reading that talks about history will let us understand that we don't need to deceive ourselves and act on the naive assumption that we should not wait. Life is one big wait. The only time we don't wait is only in those moments of surprise. For the most part, we are waiting for something, driving on the road, waiting on the stop light, waiting to go home, waiting to go out, waiting to eat, and to eat again, waiting for the night to turn to day, waiting to listen to the latest newscast, waiting in a line at the bank. And these days in this pandemic, I want to let you know, and you should know this too, that the lines at the banks and other places are very long because of social distancing waiting behind someone who is waiting, waiting to pay your bills, waiting in the doctor's office. You have to wait your turn, waiting, waiting, waiting. We have grown up hearing some cliches, like patience is a virtue. And there's another one that says, Good things come to those who wait. The truth is, there is a certain anxiety in waiting. The process, the problem, the predicament can be precarious. The truth is, some of us are waiting on the coronavirus to leave so we can get back to our everyday business, get back to work, get back to school, get back to partying for some, get back to church. But what if God is using this pandemic to clean up his church? Remember, God has all the time in the world. He is very patient with us, not willing that none perish, but that all come to repentance. Remember Noah. The record says in Genesis chapter 5 and verse 32 that Noah was 500 years old and had three sons. He was commissioned by God of a coming flood. But as Noah preached the gospel, for 120 years, it seemed as though nothing would have happened. But Noah waited patiently. For those years, he suffered the talks of people who believed him to be out of his mind. But all Noah had was his faith in God. His faith told him that even though the rain was not yet, the rain was on its way. Faith told him that he was right to believe God because
friends of mine, there's a song that says, the coming king is even at the door. Even at the door. So there are some things as people of God that we have to do. Keep on studying the word of the Lord. Keep on praying. Keep on singing until he gets here. Keep on witnessing. Keep on building for Jesus Christ. Faith in God tells me that God is still working on his church to perfect his church so his church can go to that perfect place. Faith tells me keep on accepting the not yet as the no because as our scripture says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so as we wait for Jesus to come, one writer editorializing upon her day says, During your wait, all kinds of good things are being prepared for you in heaven. Waiting on God builds up your faith and trust. Don't worry. God's timing assures you. St. John 14, 1-3 says, Let not your hearts be troubled if you believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house are many mansions. If it were, I would have told If it weren't so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you and if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And so God has his special time clock. Believe in his ways and his timing for you. It's possible because there's a scripture that says, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Remember Joseph and Moses and David. Each of them went through their own individual test. Our part, your part, is to wait and hope and trust stand to me because there's no way to be happy in Jesus. We have to trust and me. And Jesus will take care of the rest. In the meantime, as we wait on the Lord, remember that truth is knowable and mountains are movable and rivers are crossable and the commandments are keepable and problems are solvable and headaches are endurable and burdens are bearable and experiences are valuable and hills are climbable and freedom is possible and COVID-19 is curable and heaven is possible in times like these as Jesus is cleaning his church and as we live in the final moments of earth's history as we come to a close today let me share my last text with you it is taken from Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14 it says blessed are those that do his commandments that they may have rights to the tree of life and may enter in to the gates of the city. The NIV says, Blessed are those who have washed their robes that they may have rights to the tree of life and may enter in to the gates of the city. My counsel for you today, beloved friends, as we wait on Jesus to come, Keep on washing your robes. It may get dirty, but keep on washing that robe. You might stumble sometimes, but keep on washing that robe. You may get discouraged, but keep washing that robe. robe. People may point their fingers at you, but keep washing that robe. You can wash it in stain cycle. You can wash it on long cycle or you can wash it on a rock down by the river. But beloved, keep on washing that robe. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Can you imagine when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And another song says, Until
until then we will just keep on singing and there's even another song says what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see when I look upon his face the one who saves me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and lead me to that promised land what a day glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see when I look upon his face the one who saves me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and lead me to the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. Shall we pray, Heavenly Father, as we wait on your kingdom, I pray that you will keep us together. forgive us of our sins. Heal our land, Heavenly Father. Be with those individuals who have been touched by COVID-19. 